HBCU All-Star roster reveal, and nobody better to have in the house, my guy, my friend, the founder and CEO, Travis L. Williams. And before we get to it, just put in perspective what this means to have this game not just happening another year, but also out west. Yeah, in the Valley of the Sun, you think about it. It's an opportunity to take the entire HBCU All-Star experience to Phoenix, mm -hmm. the great city of Phoenix. So we're truly, truly excited. And I just want to be very honest and transparent. Phoenix is ready for this historic event. Hopefully we get some uh, HBCU love there because we have not one but two schools in this year's field of 68. Of course, that is Howard University and Grambling State, two programs that we actually spoke to last year leading yes. up to that, of course. But put in perspective what it means to have these two programs in the field representing once again. I think when you look at what the great job that Kenneth Blayton has done at Howard University and also Dante Jackson at Grambling State University, they're representing some of the best in black college basketball. And to have these two guys and our 2023 HBCU All-Star Game. They represented our coaches as well. And so not only two of the best coaches in the country, it says it sends a loud and clear message. Uh, now we got an opportunity to really go show the country what we're about in celebrating the best in black college basketball. Something to watch for that first four in, of course, the tournament starting on a Tuesday, but someone that knows the swag pretty well. I think you guys know him too, a bona fide hooper, Southern back in the day, let's just say translated to a long career in association, San Antonio Spurs. Avery Johnson, I call him Mr. Pick and Roll, <laughs> hanging out with us here to highlight everything leading up to this. And, and Avery, before we get into it, just give us, you know, insight on your HBCU experience over that time, how it molded you as an athlete person and into the person you are today. Well, first of all, I want to congratulate Travis Williams, man. What an outstanding job with the vision and all of the hard work and the execution uh, for this HBCU All-Star game. We, we've had... Uh, a ton of fun for Kellogg and myself calling these games over the years. We're back this year. I'll be on the call. But uh, just congratulations to Travis and his entire team uh, for taking this game uh, to Phoenix. Uh, my, my time at Southern University was extraordinary. Um, I had uh, uh, attended junior college and another small NAIA school. So I was in the transfer portal before the transfer portal. But when I got to Southern <laughs> University, I put it all together. That's my coach, uh, Ben Joe, who was an unbelievable coach. We played fast. We were one of the highest scoring teams in the nation. I led the nation in assists two years in a row, averaged 10 assists my junior year, and averaged a record, which still stands today, 13.3 assists my senior year. You can see I had all of the moves. I was fast, <laughs> crafty with the basketball, um, crossover. Look at the Smitty, the hesitation on the baseline. Uh, but just a wonderful time. Graduated with my degree in psychology from Southern University. So hopefully I represented the best of the best. And now that we have Howard and Grambling State in the field of uh, 68, man, I'm just so excited about the HBCUs participating in the tournament but also this HBCU All-Star Game. Coach, you look the same. I mean, you know, nothing has changed. The same body percent fat probably as well. I'm pretty sure the handle is probably still the same way years later. But you already kind of talked about it there, your experience there front and center at this game. What have you noticed? Give us some insight on that, what it means to the players, yourself, and others to be in that type of mecca when it comes to hoops at HBCUs. Well, it's more than just a game because one of the things I love that Travis Williams and his staff you know, we have an NBA combine where we bring in NBA uh, scouts and general managers for a special day to really evaluate these young men, to give them more exposure. We've had players go on to play in the NBA Summer League in Las Vegas. Some have gone on to play overseas. So it's all about exposure. They also give back to the community. So they go to different parks and schools, and, and they're really a great example and then the training that they get from financial uh, literacy, life skills. So it's the game is amazing. The game's going to be great. Lots of highlights and dunks and three-point shooting. Very competitive game. This game is not like the NBA All-Star game, by the way. These guys really compete. So, uh, But it's a whole overall opportunity for these young men to display their skills and just to get the exposure on this HBCU All-Star platform. 
Avery, thank you for sharing that message. And Avery, let me take you back to when we were in 2023 at Texas Southern University, when you brought the guys together. Share for everyone that's watching this, the message that you uh, spoke to those young men. Yeah, one of the things I talk to the young men is, it's not about where you're from, but it's about where you're going. Uh, just because you attended an HBCU school doesn't mean that the world is not yours. We want you to succeed on the court. And if you can parlay what you've done on the court for an HBCU school as a professional athlete, whether it's overseas, NBA, uh, G League, that's great. But we want you to make sure that you get your degree and understand that there are opportunities in finance, real estate, in the, in, in the legal field, uh, technology, fintech world. There's so many opportunities for you to not limit yourself and box yourself in, but use basketball as your platform to make sure that you can explore wonderful opportunities in, in this world, in this global world. Avery Johnson has always given us those layers when it comes to everything at HBCU and of course. Hey, hey, go, ahead. go ahead. And also, also, if you don't if if you don't make it as a professional athlete, you can always come and have an opportunity, to become an intern, and work your way up at <laughs> CBS Sports HQ. Yes. <laughs> Look at it, company man, <laughs> plugging as always. Love it. Mr. Love Pick it. and Roll, appreciate it as always. <laughs> Tap it in. I know you'll be excited to be there for that game in Phoenix. Appreciate it as always, Coach. Thank you, Coach. Thanks a lot. All right, so now we have to get to it, of course, the moment everybody has been waiting for. I want to get into these rosters. Let's start and reveal here Team Rick Mahorn for us, taking a look at it. When well, you see it at the 12-man roster, so you see the names and you see the representation, the MEAC, the SIAC Independent All-Stars. Of course, their coaches, Lavelle Bolton from North Carolina Central and Alfred Jordan, the D2 coach from Clark Atlanta. Break that down for us, Travis. What do we have here? Yeah, when you look at that amazing team, you like I said, we got Fred Cleveland uh, Jr. representing North Carolina Central University. First team, you know, all MEAC, one of the best players in, in the league, led the league in assists. Just if anything, you need a point that that's going to run your team, and he was able to do it for North Carolina Central University. University. Chris Martin, all SIAC, SIAC Player of the Year, mm -hmm. led their team to the regular season and conference tournament championship to the NCAA berth. One of the top guards in the country is truly excited about what he's been able to do for the Clark Atlanta University. And so uh, you look at Alan Bantran, sixth uh, man of the year for mm -hmm. Norfolk State University that finished the regular season uh, MEAC uh, conference tournament champions. And so just one of the top players was able to come in there and really put his uh, DNA in that program. When you talk about, you know, Seth Towns, who's been around, as we talked about it earlier, been around the college game for a long time, and now he has an opportunity. We uh, Howard University, that's in the first round, uh, the play-in game playing Wagner University. So to lead Howard to back-to-back MEAC Conference Tournament Championships and also back-to-back -back NCAA berth speaks loud and clear about the great job that Kenneth Blayton and Howard University is doing over there on that side of the game. So familiar household names when it comes to those programs, and of course, taking a look at Team Ben Wallace, their representation when it comes to Phoenix here, represented by the SWAC and the CIAA, coached by Johnny Jones there from Texas Southern, a longtime coach has been around the block, and Jason Armstrong from Lincoln. Interesting to see how this pans out. What do you got here, Travis? Uh, when you think about it, it starts with, you know, P.J. Henry, Texas Southern, first team all swack. And like I said, for the past few years at Texas Southern University, they've been back NCAA tournament berth. And as you know, uh, playing in the, in the SWAC uh, championship game. So start with P.J. Henry. When you look at Rashad uh, Williams, newcomer of the year in the SWAC. Mm -hmm. You know, Trey Michael Mort, uh, Moulton, Gremlin State University. And so, as you saw, Gremlin State University, you know, won the uh, SWAC conference, uh, uh, con conference Tournament Championship, and they're actually en route to play in the, in the first four as well. Right, absolutely. And so excited about that. Uh, Jalen Austin, CIAA Player of the Year. And so when you look at some of the, the type of players that are representing Ben Wallace, you know, the SWAC and the CIAA All-Stars, it speaks loud and clear about a, a brand of basketball. Can't wait to see this, of course. So those are your teams, Team Rick Mahorn and Team Ben Wallace, that will be there in Phoenix for the All-Star Game. Back here at HQ, of course, HBCU All-Star roster reveal, but we want to take a look at some players of the year from D1 and D2. We start with the Sam Jones D1 National Player of the Year there, Fred Cleveland Jr. from North Carolina Central, and then the Earl of the Pearl Monroe Division II.
Player of the Year, Chris Martin from Clark Atlanta and Travis. These are two dynamic players when you're talking about those schools there. Yeah, when you talk about what Fred Cleveland Jr. been able to do, you know, one of the top players in the MEAC and also leading the conference in assists and then being coached by one of the best coaches in the business, Lavelle Moten. So as you know, uh, you got to have a point guard that can run your team. And so for them, uh, North Carolina Central to finish, you know, at least in second place in their league this year. And uh, he's one of the best players in the country. And we're excited to have him a part of the HBCU All-Star Game and <coughs> have him a part of being uh, what it means to be one of the top players represented in HBCU basketball. Yeah, when you look at those numbers and what he's done this year, as the kids say, Travis nowadays, one of those ones. By the way, he had 15 points and five dimes per game. The senior guard, he talked about that leadership there when it comes to leading his group, a walking bucket, as kids say. And, of course, when you talk about him, we have to have him on the show, right? It yes, only indeed. makes right. Joining us now, of course, ahead of the game and all the action, Frank Cleveland Jr., appreciate your time here tapping in with us. Of course, before you get to that game and experience, I'm curious, what does this mean to you to be a part of this? Uh, it means the most to me uh, to show all my hard work over the years is paying off and uh, to be a part of such a special event that's just started to take off and be one of those pioneers to help it go further is a blessing. And Travis has highlighted this. It's just it's more than just the game itself, right? It's also the game, but also what comes with it that a lot of people don't see. But what are you most looking forward to that week of the game? Uh, just the networking, getting to meet different people around around the world, different uh, agents, different people that can help uh, boost my professional career. Uh, I'm excited to be a part of the different uh, community events, as well as uh, meet some of my fellow colleagues out there that also put in the work to be a part of this special game. Hey, Fred. Good talking to you. Fred, tell us one of the best highlights of your career playing at North Carolina Central University with Coach Moden and just your entire, you know, your HBCU experience. Uh, let me see. I think one of the best experiences I probably had was meeting my new teammates. Uh, them just accepting me as a leader and uh, letting me put basically run the show and put them in a special places for them to be good and for our team to have success. And I'll probably say the one biggest thing that I appreciated this year was uh, I think it was my, my game where I had, uh, I think, 25 points and like 10 assists. I think we played Dale State. It's probably one of the most best games I've probably had ever in my career. And uh, it, it was great for it to be a part of HBCU, like North Carolina Central. And in the atmosphere it was in front of my, my parents and my childhood friend, that was probably one of the best moments I've had since being here. Fred, before we let you go, I'm curious your thoughts on the teams being named after some legends in the game, not just in the college rankings, but in the league as well. Team Rick Mahorn and Team Ben Wallace. Your thoughts on that, you know, being attached to that type of element here? And it's special. You know, this is so that a lot of, if you keep working hard, anything can happen. Uh, to, those are all guys that came up the ranks through HBCUs and made it to the highest level and made the best of their situation. Ben Wallace, you know, is probably one of the best defenders of all time. I'm not too familiar with Rick Mahorn. That's a little bit before my time. <laughs> but uh, also, I, know, I know the name through basketball and me being a student of the game. And I, I'm, I'm pretty sure he was a great player as well. And uh, just being a part of it again is just, it's just a blessing and, and as a whole. Fred, I'll tell you this. If you're a fan of MJ, he saw a lot of Rick Mahorn back in the day. And I guarantee you that week <laughs> leading up to this All-Star game, you will find out who he is. You will yeah. not leave Phoenix after that note there, finding out who Rick Mahorn is. But again, appreciate your time. And of course, good luck that week when it comes to playing in that game. And, and also, the player of the year. Congrats on that, my friend. Thank you. Thank you guys for choosing me. Hey, Travis, I want to get back to you. Of course, the, the whole thought of naming the teams after legendary players because when you have a game like this of this magnitude, of course, he, he mentioned there, he's not yeah. familiar with Rick Mahorn, but I, I know he will after yeah. this week. To have these icons, of course, representing the teams, what does this mean to you and what was the message behind all that? It's important to our culture because if you take it back, we had 65 of the nation's top players represented prior to this day representative of all our, you, what we try to do is make sure we pay uh, honor and re, uh, honor and rep, you know rep, 
It's important for us to give that recognition and respect to our HBCU legends, and I think that's important. You know, Team Rick Mahorn versus Team Ben Wallace. It's important to recognize their legendary HBCU and NBA career, mm -hmm. and I think that's important for these young, uh, young HBCU All-Stars to be able to do that. Awesome to have that involved. And I want to take a look at some of those national coaches of the year when it comes to the All-Star game. And I want you to break this down for us. We look at it there. Dante Jackson, the head coach of Grambling State, and also in D2, you got Alfred Jordan. I'm just curious your thoughts on all this, uh, seeing these coaches, of course, dueling here. I think when you look at uh, the career of uh, Dante Jackson at Grambling State University, it's, it's said, it speaks loud and clear about what he's been able to do. Back-to-back -back regular, uh, regular season SWAC conference championships. And then last week, he got an opportunity to win the SWAC Conference Tournament Championship and go to the NCAA Tournament. So that speaks loud and clear about his career. One of the best coaches in the business. And you talk about what Alfred Jordan been able to do at Clark Atlanta University. You go from eight wins your first year at Clark Atlanta to 22 wins this year. The SWAC regular season and Conference Tournament Championship. And then you get an opportunity to take your team and get an NCAA Tournament berth. It speaks loud and clear about what Clark Atlanta has been able to do in his, uh, his coaching pedigree. So those coaches, of course, they did their job, but we got some more coaches that are going to yep. duel it out when it comes to everything in Phoenix. I want to welcome in the coaches of each team here now. Johnny Jones, of course, from Texas Southern, will be coaching Team Ben Wallace, and Coach Lavelle Moten for North Carolina Century University will be running the show for Team Rick Mahorn. Force, just want to say thank you guys <laughs> for joining us, and I hope somebody tells Fred who Rick Mahorn is, but Coach Jones, I'll start with you to have this collection of talent for HBCUs all in one place to be a part of this, a game like this, what does this mean to you? I couldn't be more excited and uh, really honored uh, to have the opportunity. And uh, I want to share the same sentiments as uh, uh, Coach Avery Johnson. I heard him on earlier in reference to uh, talking about Travis and the vision uh, that he had to uh, get this uh, all-star game started. It's been amazing. I've had an opportunity to go down to New Orleans and watch uh, when the first one uh, took place and also had an opportunity uh, to uh, see the one that was held here on my campus at Texas Southern University last year and it was amazing and uh, from what I understand Travis is uh, taking it to a whole nother level uh, there in Phoenix and I couldn't be more excited uh, to have an opportunity to be a part of it uh, hands-on and coaching to several of the young men that are on this uh, squad that I'm extremely familiar with many of them played here uh, in our league and I uh, just can't wait uh, for the opportunity to be there and sharing that experience and, and uh, just be a part of uh, hopefully uh, making these kids uh, just be the best version of themselves uh, over these next uh, few days that I have an opportunity to share with them and coaching against a legend uh, like uh, Coach Moten, who I have a great deal of respect for. Uh, looking forward to it. Coach Moten, on that same note there, how valuable is this for you, the players, to be a part of something like this now and also building into the future? You know, for me, it's uh, it's kind of twofold. You know, I agree with Johnny and Avery. Um, you know, I remember Trav approached me with the idea. So I remember this 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 incredible event was just the idea. It, just, it was at its inception. And then for him to execute it and get so many sponsors and give these young kids a platform on, on Final Four Sunday, um, you know, I think it's amazing within itself. Being a product of an HBCU, number one, I feel like I'm getting older because in 96, I was HBCU Player of the Year, so it's great to see Fred come back years later and do that. I got it over a guy named Ben Wallace, <laughs> uh, who this team is named after. So these years are starting to add up a little bit. Uh, but in, in that, actually, at the time, it was in Atlanta. My, my coach was uh, the legendary late great uh, Big House Gaines. Um, so to see this you know, evolve and ascend it to something of this magnitude and again, give these young men the platform uh, to compete on the highest level. And what I want them to understand is that this is an opportunity to change your life, right? It may not necessarily resort into an NBA uh, contract, however it may be, but many people are seeing you and it's an opportunity to come build and cultivate relationships that can help you network into the next facet of your life. Hey, Coach, uh, uh, first of all, thank you guys for, for joining us today. And so, as you know, 
this is a grind, this is a, a fight, this is a God-driven vision. I just want to thank you guys for joining us and being a part of this historic moment. And so just tell us uh, the entire HBCU All-Star Game experience. Johnny, I know we did it there last year at Texas Southern University. Uh, Lavelle, you being a former HBCU coach, just tell us what the HBCU game experience means to you guys. Well, certainly it was um, flattering to have an opportunity to be there kind of courtside and, and watching everything take place. You had a lot of celebrities. Um, you connected with a lot of people here in the city. Uh, folks were in here for the uh, Final Four. All of them came over, uh, showed up uh, for the game. It was uh, uh, a really unique deal. But I, I've been very fortunate uh, because of your events to have uh, three kids that have played in it, and John Walker and uh, Carl Nicholas, who's playing for the um, uh, Lakers uh, G League team, and then uh, Bryson Grisham uh, the year before, who played in the event down in New Orleans and have gone on and have done extremely well um, overseas. But it's a tremendous event. Our president, I was very fortunate she bought in, uh, along with our athletic director in the city, to make sure that everything here on campus uh, was a go, especially trying to uh, share in the vision uh, that you had for this event. And then I think all these young men had a great time. I mean, the kids came back and telling me what an experience they had uh, around the city, doing a lot of the uh, volunteer stuff and, and, and going over and, and send different people and, and, and being a part of certain lectures that I think is going to benefit them, as Coach Moten said, uh, that's going to have an impact on them for the rest of their lives. And it's not just a basketball thing. I think it's some things that's going to impact them and have a strong impact on them that they remember for a lifetime. All these guys don't get the opportunity to play in the NCAA tournament. All don't get an opportunity to play in the uh, Final Four. But have an opportunity to go through an experience like this for just a few days share in the moment and be a part of everything that uh, you guys have surrounded them with that's going to be amazing it's something they will carry with them uh, for a lifetime you know i i agree with uh everything that johnny just said you know i think it's uh extraordinary i think it's monumental uh i too had a couple of players randy miller and uh brendan madley bacon uh, as of last year you know compete in this game and they too came back and was excited to share about their experiences you know from meeting magic johnson or jamie fox you know we got to understand these are young people so when they see celebrities a lot of times it's their first times um but not only that just having an opportunity to compete on a national stage and showcase your talent in front of america you know that's something that these guys really Really get an opportunity to do and I think what you've done Travis promote the brand of HBCU basketball and let the world know um, that we got a great basketball brand right it exceeds beyond uh, Ben Wallace and uh, Charles Oakley and Rick Mahorn and Avery Johnson and Lindsey Hunter like it, Earl of Pearl it, it exceeds right and so this is just a continuation of, of what's to come and you know I, I, I just think life is about moments right when we look back and we're old and gray we look back at moments not none of the superficial things but we just look back and, and and we cherish the moments this is a moment of a lifetime that these young people will always remember and again trav you've presented them and given them this opportunity to cherish forever and so they can share it with their kids kids possibly one day a platform, a message, all inclusive with a game as well. And coaches, before I let you go, I just want to have a little fun here. Any, any wagers between two <laughs> sides here? Anything fun and anything you guys got going on? Uh, per NCAA rules, we are not allowed. A <laughs> <laughs> PR answer, okay. <laughs> well, look, I'll make I'll make sure uh, Johnny and Travis both buy me dinner on, on each night. There so you I go. Guess. That's it. There you go. <laughs> there you go. As Today, long as you don't bring it, as long as you don't bring any of his guys out there playing like Rick Mahorn. Uh oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I think it'd be a great event. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> First foul of the game is going to be a, a, a hacker shot. <laughs> <laughs> well, coaches, I appreciate the energy and everything, and I can't wait to see it. April 7th between you guys here, Coach Jones, Coach Moten. Can't wait to see you here in a couple days. All things going in Phoenix. Appreciate your time. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you, you so guys. much. Appreciate it. And, Travis, I want to get back into it. Before before we go and, and you know, part our ways and, and – People forget that, you know, this game is going to happen in a couple weeks, but there's a message, but there's also things that build up to it. 
because it's not just the game that you have going on. There's other, they, they mentioned it a little bit, career building as well, opportunities, because a lot of these guys will not go to the league. Yep. But there are opportunities there that you're presenting. What is that? Yeah, I think it's important. When we get our HBCU All-Stars coming to you know Phoenix, it'll be Wednesday from Wednesday, April 3rd, all the way through Monday, April 8th. And it's very important that we give back. And so the first time, first moment that we get there, we're going to have an award ceremony. I think that's important there. We ha we're celebrating 24 of the nation's top players in black college basketball. Mm -hmm. They need to be recognized and honored for that. So we'll have a war ceremony, not only for them, but the local Phoenix leaders that we think is important for the community that's really going to pour into our HBCU All-Stars when we get there. Also, what we have in this is what we call a HBCU All-Stars Mixer, where we invite the great city of Phoenix to come and meet and greet and network and fellowship. It's all about relationships. And so this is an opportunity for folks that are not familiar with our HBCU brand of basketball. You can come front and center and meet us, and we can talk and discuss that. And I think that's important. A YMCA Youth Basketball Camp and Clinics. Friday Fun Day, where we're going to go to Grant Park there in Phoenix, and we're going to renovate that court, and we're going to have a Friday Fun Day, the food trucks, vendors, bounce houses, along with our social justice and civil rights organizations, where we want to make sure our voices are lit, heard loud and clear, and make sure our HBCU All-Stars use their platform and their voices heard, and make sure folks get to poll and vote. And so along with that, we got a lot of initiatives that we think is important. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a college admissions fair where we've invited all 100 plus of our HBCUs across the country to participate. I think that's important. We're able to expose the Phoenix High School students that are interested in attending HBCUs to our proud and prestigious HBCUs. And not only that, we have an internship program that is really, really significant. It's a, uh, a non-paid internship program, but the experience is very valuable. And so we had an opportunity where in our past few years, we've averaged 150 to 175 interns that are participating. Why do we do it? We think it's important for them, our interns, to learn behind the scenes, the sports market events and media space, whether it's basketball and game operation, any type of active space or career they're in, this is a great opportunity for them. You know, we also do a pro day combine. Why do we do that? It's important for our guys being provided the same platform as our other Power 5 schools and our other colleagues. So we do an extra pro day combine on that Friday, April the 5th, prior to our All-Star game. And I think some of these are some of the events that really hits home mm -hmm. and very important to our culture. And for the players, too, that, that's a lot, but I see right there in their finger, they, they also get what? The they also get ring? a commemorative championship ring. Okay. This is an opportunity for us to celebrate them. Right. Commemorative championship ring, you talked about career transition. Mm -hmm. We partner with Reveal Suits. We also provide them a custom suit to help in their career transition. And it's a give back. You know, everything that we do with all of our events, we don't charge. But it's very important for us to be able to give back in scholarship initiatives. Right. So any high school student that are interested in participating in HBCUs or going to HBCUs, or any current HBCU student that in need of financial assistance, we help provide scholarship opportunities. So a lot of our events and a lot of our give back is to provide these opportunities and scholarship opportunities. All that coming, of course, in April. Travis L. Williams, appreciated the CEO and founder of everything coming for the March Madness, but also the HBCU All-Star Game. Can't wait to see you. Appreciate your time and joining us today. Thank you. And also, I just want to give a very special shout out to our CBS Sports Partners. This opportunity wouldn't be uh, possible without great leadership from CBS. Uh, you know, Kyle Ham, you know, and their staff mm -hmm. that's making this possible for us to be here and, and doing the great things. And also, uh, thank you. We're, we're oh, two years. We're two years strong in this, and so just truly excited about our great partnership uh, with CBS Sports. Well, let's keep it for another 10. Of course, that game, as I mentioned, April 7th. You can get those tickets now on sale to see all the smoke in the city in Phoenix. It's coming, guys, when it comes to the HBCU All-Star Game.